All right, guys, so I gotta be honest and upfront here. As the banking crisis drags on, the possibility for more collapses is absolutely there, and honestly, there probably will be more collapses in the banking sector. But why is this happening? What is causing all this? And what are the repercussions of it all? Now, what we're gonna discuss today, I honestly haven't really heard this angle taken in regards to all this, so let's talk about it so that way you have all the information. I just ask in exchange for you to gently tap that like button and consider subscribing too. It's super easy to do if you like the truth without the hype. So I actually answered those exact questions for my group in a video I released for them, but I wanted to share it here with you guys today as well as the answer is exactly the same as it was back then when I made that video. Now back in that video, we were discussing Deutsche Bank, and I know I mispronounced that guys, I'm sorry, I think it's Deutsche Bank, I'm not sure. Anyways, that's what we were discussing specifically, but you can insert the name of any bank that's in trouble or potentially in trouble, and it doesn't matter because we will see more bank failures and what the cause of it all is exactly the same for all of them. So if they're in trouble, just you know, basically throw their name in there and this applies. And even the ones we don't know that are in trouble yet, it's gonna apply to them too. So let me get this all queued up for you guys here. And remember, if you want three to five more videos like this a week, don't forget about the flash sale for the group that is ending this weekend where you get videos like this. You get live Q and A's with me, my buy and sell alerts, my price targets, uh, you know, watch lists, free courses, a ton more. Just check out the pinned comment down there and see if it's right for you what is going on guys and hopefully everybody's having a great day out there i wanted to talk about deutsche bank and kind of the next bank to quote unquote fall and this whole contagion and everything else and kind of discuss these things specifically um because i know it's, it's a hot topic right now i know it's on everybody's mind so if you guys kind of remember when we talked about the banking crisis right at first uh you know we basically kind of said hey you know this is part of the normal business cycle right basically you have these boom times where things get overheated, everybody's making money, it doesn't matter, even if you're a terrible company, you're making money. And then we kind of have the reversal, you know, whenever everything kind of corrects and self-corrects and such. Or to put it another way, basically, you know, whenever the tide goes out per se, you know, Warren Buffett's famous for saying that, you see who has their swim trunks on and who doesn't. And what we're seeing right now in the bank banking sector specifically is those people that didn't have their clothes on, basically those bad banks are starting to get exposed. They could get away with it in a low interest rate environment and a high interest rate environment. You can't get away with it, guys. And I talked about that when we talked about that in that video and on the Q and A's and everything else, I don't think it's over with. You're going to have more banks that fail. However, that does not mean the banking system is not strong. That doesn't mean there's not fears. It doesn't mean there's not worries. It doesn't mean costs don't go up. It doesn't mean a lot of other things won't happen. But the sound banks that have taken care of business, which is going to be the vast majority of the banks, guys, it's I'm not worried about any of the big banks here in the U.S. Clearly, nobody is, um, you know, all the other regional banks and small banks. It's not like all those are all going to go away tomorrow. They're all going to go under and we're just going to be left with the big eight banks left. And that's going to be it. It's not going to be that way at all. However, what you are going to see is you're going to see some large banks, um, especially those that cannot or, you know, based upon the laws in those countries and such, which is what you're seeing. Uh, they cannot as heavily regulate. You know, basically, and we saw that with Credit Suisse, right? They basically had to change the laws in order to regulate and to take that bank over and then to uh, sell it to UBS and such. So that, that's kind of, uh, you know, laws are different. Not everybody plays by the same rules, all that sort of stuff like that. So you're going to see some weird things, some extraordinary things. Uh, and you're going to see more bank failures, more importantly. Now, do I think Deutsche Bank is going to go under? I don't know. Um, it is a large bank there. It is what I would consider critical to the German economy. So they'll probably find some way to either save it or to, um, you know, pass it on to somebody else, you know, put it underneath, uh, you know, a different umbrella, kind of like UBS bought up uh, Credit Suisse. Something like that is going to happen um, if I had to guess. And I'll be honest with you, it will be a, just like the Swiss regulators where, and the Swiss government were very, very happy to get rid of Credit Suisse. It's very the same with Deutsche Bank. And let me just kind of go through um, what all has happened with that bank. And I know a lot of you guys don't follow banking. It's boring. I understand that completely, but it's been a bad bank for a really long time here, at least more than a decade. Uh, it just has not been a good bank. It's been, you know, riled up in scandal, you know, scandals at the highest levels of the company, board members, uh, you know, new CEO after new CEO, um, I mean, everything in the world here, I actually wrote a little bit of a list here. Um, so let's go through it. Uh, let's see here. In 2015, they received a $2.5 billion fine over rate rigging claims. Again, uh, those aren't, you know, they're not fining you unless they find something actually happened. Uh, and then 2016, Department of Justice, U.S. Department of Justice, uh, made them pay $14 billion to settle mis-selling investigation. Uh, there you go. There's another uh, nice little thing. Doesn't happen unless you really did something wrong. Uh, 2017. I mean, it just keeps right on rolling. It's like every year, right? Uh, Deutsche Bank agrees to pay the U.S. and the U.K. authorities 630 million dollars to settle a money laundering case in Russia. 
Um, they have had multiple money laundering cases. It seems to be a thing that they just uh, don't frown upon, <laughs> per se. Uh, let's see here. 2018, police raid uh, Deutsche Bank headquarters over money laundering allegations. Again, that's after they had just gotten fined and settled with the U.S. and the U.K. governments for the same exact thing. Here we are again, 2018. They're getting raided by the police, uh, German police. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Commerce Bank, uh, after that, in 2019, uh, cut off talks. Um, you guys can probably figure out why. Um, in the last year, or I would call it year and a half or so, uh, they were raided for a multi-billion dollar tax fraud against the uh, German government there. Multi-billion dollar tax fraud. They were, um, I won't call it aiding and abetting. I don't know what the right word is for it, but there's a word for what was going on there. Um, they were again fined and uh, hammered for not controlling money laundering. And they were also once again involved in a Forex fraud scandal of some sort. Um, those are not things. that You might have one thing from a rogue division or a rogue group of executives in a bank and such. These types of repeated patterns over and over and over again mean the bank is bad, no matter how large they are. Um, again, regulation is different. I understand the finance space and specifically banking is very U.S. centric. Um, but, you know, you have to kind of understand the German laws are just very, very different than the U.S. laws are and such. The regulation is very different. Everything's very different. So um, as you can see, that's not an example of a good bank. That's a bank that needs to go away. Now, does it need to be as dramatic? Do we need to put the system at risk or all these other things? No, there's an orderly way to do that. Hopefully the German government does that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, you know, again, these, these types of transactions are very complex. They're not easy to understand. They're not easy to happen and such. But I don't think this points to problems with the system or anything else like that. There's not, you know, out of the thousands of banks that are out there, there are handfuls of them that are going to be bad, poorly run, just like companies, right? I mean, you can look at all the different companies. You pick a sector. Uh, there's good companies. There's bad companies. There's poorly run companies. There's, you know, very well run companies. And everywhere in between across the spectrum. And it's the same thing with banks and such. Um, you know, we can debate whether or not they should be regulated heavier or not as heavy. Whatever the case is, uh, you know, you make a good case for both. But the reality that we have to deal with today is, is that interest rates are rising which means it is exposing the bad actors. It is exposing, uh, you know, problems within the system. And when the system gets rough in the case of Deutsche Bank, their problem is they can't get insurance for anything that they're doing within their banks. Remember, banks are hedged. Right? That's what SVB got in trouble with. They weren't hedged against the interest rate risk. Therefore, they got creamed in the end whenever they had a bank run. There was nothing they could do about it. They couldn't withdraw the cash and make it happen. Uh, they're basically insolvent at that stage. That's what happened there. Um, this is kind of, hey, they can't get insurance. They can't, you know, there's not... A problem like there was at SVB. However, because of the situation, the cost of insurance went up. And if you're an insurer, uh, you know, would you charge, you know, JP Morgan Chase the same as you would, you know, Deutsche Bank? The, the reality is no. Uh, you know, there, there's a reason why Deutsche Bank is paying higher rates because there's a higher chance of fraud there and such. Uh, they don't do business by the books. They are, you know, they do everything from defraud customers to defraud other banks to defraud the government. That's, you know, something that happened. I don't know if it's culturally, again, I'm not, I'm not in Germany, so I, I don't have that intimate understanding. Um, but I just know that that's a scenario where if I'm an insurer, of course, I'm going to charge them more. And then of course that means, you know, costs go up, what's going on, you know, it, it kind of adds to the, uh, I guess it's kind of a contagion feel with the bank, uh, as to what's happening and what's going on and such. So this is not going to be the last bank that's going to go under or have a significant change, policy change, whatever the case is. It's not the last time it's going to happen, guys. So don't let that fear narrative and all those sort of things go out there. You've got to kind of understand that, hey, the tide has come out and, and we can argue whether the tide should or shouldn't come out. To me, it should because it's part of the normal business cycle, right? We can't have zombie companies hanging around forever. We can't have bad companies hanging around forever. Um, you know, we can't have people, uh, you know, bad businesses hanging around because they can just get cheap credit forever. Um, you know, it's just not, it's not good for long-term. It's not good for the consumer. It's not good for the economy. It's not good for everything long-term. So you know, short-term, a lot of angst, a lot of pain, a lot of, uh, you know, crap, uh, to go through and such long-term it's better for everything. So this is not the last bank that will potentially fail or be in trouble. Um, it's also not the first one, obviously. So you guys got to kind of understand this is part of the cycle and kind of be willing to just look at each one of them individually. Of course, if I see something that is, oh wow, that could really trigger that and then this and so on and so forth, I'm happy to go through it and such uh, with you guys. And of course I would share that with you guys immediately, but I continue to see YouTubers discuss things and discuss the way interest rates work and discuss the way they affect the bottom line and discuss the fact that, oh, nobody, everybody's negative interest income now and stupid stuff like that. I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> you know, one, you can't say on one hand that 
you know, oh my gosh, we're at record levels of credit card debt. You know, Americans just keep spending to the moon and it just, it's record after record after record and then say, oh yeah, but they can't make any money on interest. Like those don't even go together. You know, basically this person has made a video before about that. And then they made a point to say, well, no, no, nobody's taking out loans right now. Why would anybody take out loans at these high interest rates? And it's just like, Okay, you can't have it both ways. One, two, the vast majority of the bank's loans that they make a lot of money on are not consumer loans. It's a huge part of their segment. Absolutely agree. Uh, but they have ways to roll those loans over to get rid of those loans, get them off their books, all those super low interest rate loans and stuff like that. It's called interest rate risk. And banks have a way of mitigating and managing that risk. So there's a reason why JP Morgan Chase isn't giving you 6% on your freaking checking account right now. You know, other banks are, I would agree, but the vast majority of people who need cash and need cash for their business and need money flowing through that's all in JP Morgan Chase like that, they're giving them very little return. And then obviously offsetting whatever the, you know, the return is on their other loans that they already had on their books that are low. And of course they're making new loans to businesses. There's a lot of businesses that operate, you know, on debt in the first place. So the gap is already there. That's, that's how come I just, uh, you know, just take a look at what's in an earnings call, not what a YouTuber says. Maybe I should have said that up front. Take a look at what an earnings call says, not what a YouTuber. Look at their interest income and tell me, is it going up? Is it going down? Is it going down by how much? Um, acting like all of a sudden these banks are all going to be illiquid because, you know, there's this vast majority of this interest rate to where when you logically think through it, yeah, I wouldn't want a mortgage right now. I wouldn't want to pay, you know, six, 7%, whatever the case is. And okay, well, they're just not sitting there, you know, with 2% mortgages out there. And then of course they're having to pay out 4% for uh, savings accounts. So see, they're losing money there. And it's like, okay, that makes sense, but it doesn't make any sense. Cause that's not absolutely not how banks operate at all. They're not doing that. Um, it's just not the case. It's not their loan mix. It's not any of those things and such. So it's not the reality of the situation that happens there. Again, it's a very basic example that makes sense um, until you understand banks are far more complex and um, they're not going to make loans that put them in that scenario. They're not going to keep loans on the books that keep them in that scenario. And they most certainly are not going to pay out a return on a, on a checking account or, you know, a savings account or money market or whatever. That's going to put them in that negative situation in the first place. It's just, I, mean, I guess SVB may have, cause they were, <laughs> they were wholly incompetent, but outside of a completely incompetent bank, nobody's doing that. So that sort of talk is just silly. Again, I saw it, it was big YouTubers and I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know, this is just, uh, you know, here. I, I, again, I don't think it's intentional. Nobody's intentionally trying to mislead or anything else like that. It's just uh, somebody that doesn't have uh, an intimate knowledge and isn't, you know, they're not going through bank financials. They're not listening to earnings calls. They haven't done all the work on the banks. They haven't studied the banks and such. So uh, they know them on a very cursory level and understand the importance of them. But that deep dive into, okay, how do they actually operate? How do they actually make their money and such? Um, you know, you just don't have that. So anyways, I just wanted to make sure I kind of touched on that and just kind of so you guys had, you know, the latest information on this bank, what the heck was going on and such. Um, you know, because the noise tends to just jump from, oh, they're failing. This is the bigger problem. And then, it, you know, all the speculation and all the other stuff kind of comes. Um, and I kind of want to wrap it up and, okay, well, let's look at the situation here and then tell me, um, you know, whether this is a case of the tide going out, nobody wearing any pants, or is this the sign of an actual problem? And even the people with, with pants are, are going to have a problem. <laughs> I was going to say D pants, but, uh, you know, the people with pants are going to get D pants. I don't know. I, whatever now, you guys know I'm terrible with analogies. Anyways, hopefully this was helpful, guys, and y'all have a great day out there. And remember, if you want to learn how to do evaluation, see my buy and sell alerts in real time, get videos like this, you know, three, four, five times a week. Uh, you know, tons of exclusive videos. We've got live Q&As you can do with me. You can slide into my DMs if you want to. Uh, we got courses, you know, all kinds of other materials in there, the best Discord out there. Make sure you check out the pinned comment down there and check out the flash sale and see if it's right for you. And click here to see exactly which stocks I'm buying in this market. And click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.